Today we're going to do a quick overview of the new uh, Skidoo E-TAC 800. Uh, so to start off, some might think or might not know that the uh, E-TAC is not uh, a brand new uh, idea this year. It was introduced into the Evan, Evinrude outboard motors, I think, back in 2002-2003. Uh, Evinrude, uh, for some people that don't know, is owned by Skidoo. Uh, so they've had the technology for quite some years and it was actually introduced into uh, the SKU lineup in 2009 in the E-TEC 600. This year it's available in the 800 and this is the first year for it. So we're going to do a quick run through of all the uh, benefits. A lot of this stuff, if you've been uh, checking out the websites and reading about this new sled, you'll probably heard a lot of this stuff. Um, the increased horsepower, the first pull start, the, the smooth idle. This year, uh, previous years on 09 and 2010 uh, E-Tech 600, the break-in was uh, hourly based. This year on the 800 they've changed it to fuel based. Roughly uh, three tanks of fuel before you're fully broken in. Virtually no smoke and smell, the emissions are super low, um, the fuel and the oil uh, efficiency is way, way better than any other 800 in its class. Uh, there's no battery and uh, the altitude compensating uh, for the fuel and oil is all controlled by the computer now. So there's no DPM anymore, no carburetors. Um, so we'll just do a quick run through of how they're accomplishing some of these uh, benefits. So. Uh, the E-Tech is a direct inject and basically what I mean by a direct inject is that the fuel is injected directly into the combustion chamber. On uh, previous models, fuel injected sleds, um, like the Skidoo's SDI in previous years, it was fuel injected obviously but it was a semi-direct inject which basically means the injector was located at the back of the cylinder. This is the new E-Tech. You can see the injector is here. Traditionally where you would see a spark plug on the motor is now a fuel injector. Um, those are the two big major differences between the SDI motor and the E-Tech. Most other manufacturers, uh, Articat and Polaris, are still doing some type of uh, semi-direct. Not quite the same, a little bit different, but same principle as a semi-direct. So BRP, Skidoo are the only one doing the direct inject E-Tech and that's why they're getting all the uh, all these great benefits from this motor compared to other fuel injected sleds. Um, traditionally, the semi-direct uh, fuel injected, the injector injects the uh, fuel into the transfer port and then back in, up into the combustion chamber. Now, with, like I said earlier, the E-Tech is directly injected into the combustion chamber and that's why they're getting the first pull start. We'll back up a slide here. So this is your spark plug now. Usually it was up here, this is where your injector is. So when the machine is pulled over, fuel is directed right from the fuel injector right onto the spark plug. And that's how they're getting the first pull start every time. Now these plugs have to be indexed and pointing a certain way in order for it to get this first pull start all the time. So if you do remove the spark plugs, they have to be indexed or tor torqued to a certain spec so this electrode is lining up directly with the uh, injector so you get the first pull start. If it's not, uh, you will not get the first pull. If it, the plug's not torqued to the right spec, um, you won't get the first pull start and your fuel efficiency will decrease a little bit. You're not going to do any major damage to the engine, but uh, if you remove the plugs and it doesn't start quite like it did before, then that's probably a good indication of what it might be. Uh, the electrical system on this is a 1200 watt, 60 volt electrical system. Compared to your standard 800 carbureted slide by Skidoo, it was a 480 watt. 12 volt stator. So as you can see by those numbers the uh, the output is quite quite large compared to the older sleds. Um, and basically the 60 volts are used to power up the injectors, the ignition coil, the fuel and oil pump, everything you need to start the machine. Once that kicks in there's a converter inside the ECM that converts the 60 volts down to a 12 volt system which basically is a traditional uh, system that would run all your other functions on a sled. Uh, so your ray valves, your lights, your gauges, your battery, your charging system, your starter if you have it. There's also a secondary system, 12 volt also, that uh, activates the hand warmers, heated grips, and the accessories if you have any plugged into it. Um, your hand warmers aren't going to work if this machine is sitting at idle, just so you know. Uh, the machine has to rev over 2000 RPM 
in order for those to kick in. And another unique thing about this E-Tech is that the oil pump is uh, electronically controlled now. So there's no cables to adjust. Uh, the ECM and the oil pump work in conjunction and it decides how much oil it needs and when it needs it. Um, so you don't have to worry about uh, adding oil to the fuel for the break-in, adjusting uh, your cable or anything like that because it no longer is, it exists. So everything that I've uh, previously discussed uh, is basically control controlled by the ECM. All these, uh, the machine has lots of sensors over it, relate to all the different functions that the motor can do and it's controlled by the ECM. And, it, so, and one unique thing about the ECM on this machine is that it's fuel cooled. Uh, so it does get very hot with uh, all the functions that it carries out, so in order to compensate that, they run fuel through the ECM to keep it cool and running nice and smooth. So now we're going to do a quick uh, overview of the sled itself and the differences from uh, 2010 to 2011, some of the major differences. One of the major differences is the dual air intake. So you have an air intake up here, it used to be mounted down here on the previous models. It's up higher now and there's one on each side of the machine. So and what a lot of people don't know about this E-Tech, the E-Tech, yeah, is brand new for the 800, but basically the heart of this motor is uh, the same as 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, basically. Uh, slight changes in each year, but for all intents and purposes, the heart, the core of the motor is the same. The crank, uh, the pistons, the cylinder. The major differences are, is the head, really, and the ray valves are a little different, but for all intents and purposes, the motor itself is the same. Um, back here we have the throttle bodies, where the carbs used to be located. So basically you can see they look something like a car, but they're not at all, there's no fuel running through them at all, just air. Um, and these car throttle bodies up front here, the diameter, is a 52 mil, which is quite large. On your carbureted sled last year, it was only a 40 mil. So there's a lot more air coming into the sled itself. The ski stance itself has been uh, changed in all the models for this year. Right now it's a 36 stance and you can go to a 38. Last year, late, last year the narrow stance was 38 to a 40, so it's uh, two inches wider. Also the ski is fully changed, uh, it's a new style ski. We got to ride it last year and it seems to be a 100% improvement from uh, last year's. And also about the handle, they've made the handle different and it's for a two grab, so you can grab it with two hands nice and easy. And the ski itself is much stiffer and I think it's going to give you a much better ride. So back of the machine now and uh, a few things have changed back here is the, uh, the heat exchanger is actually a little bit wider, so we should get a little better coolant at it, cooling out of it. And the track itself has been, the track itself has not changed except for the porting. Another feature on the E-Tech motor is that it has a warm up mode. So when, it is, when you do start the machine, uh, it will idle nice right away. There is no choke because it's fuel injected. So just pull the handle, start it up, and it, it'll go into warm-up mode automatically. And when it is in warm-up mode, uh, it won't rev above 6,500 RPM, I've been told. So uh, if you get on the trail and pin it and it's not revving up to 8,000, just uh, let it warm up a little bit more and I'm sure it will. Uh, another feature on this during the break-in period is that it will consume more oil and fuel than it normally will after the break-in period, so don't get too worried about that. And also in the break-in period, um, if you notice it misfiring here and there, don't be too panicked about that because that's quite normal. This is new technology for a lot of snowmobilers, so I would strongly suggest uh, reading the tags here. It tells you all about the break-in period and what can happen. Uh, and I would take a look at the manual underneath the seat. Um, there's some good info in there. Uh, it is new for a lot of people. It's new for us, so uh, it's worthwhile. The more you know, the better you're going to better uh, you're going to treat the machine and uh, have a better understanding for it and uh, it might save you a few trips to your local dealer if you can figure it out yourself. That's it for all the new e-tech info and I uh, hope you have a great winter. We're going to fire this up and uh, see you later.